Hi, I'm Robert uh, from Papers with Codes, um, and I'm here to tell you about a new feature of Papers with Codes um, that we are just released today, and that is uh, called Sota Bench. Um, all right, so, but first of all, what is Papers with Codes? So the mission of Papers with Code is to be the best starting place if you're starting a new ML project. And how we do that is by aggregating and putting together all the ML artifacts and all the other related information that you might need. So let's say that you're you know, starting with NLP and you want to, do, uh, want to do BERT. So you go to the paper, you read the paper, but you're not going to re-implement the paper. You want to know, OK, what are the most um, well-known, most well-used implementations of that paper? And we actually find implementations of papers on GitHub, and we link them back to papers so we can tell you that these are the most popular implementations of BERT. But then you might say, well, OK, BERT has been published a year ago. Uh, is this still state of the art? Is, still, is this still what people use? Or are they using a different variant or, 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 something, that, uh, or something else? And for this, um, so how we answer this question is essentially we take the evaluation results from papers and we compare them with the evaluation results in other papers. So if you read the paper, you'll, you'll, you'll see, okay, it's been state-of-the-art at that time, but here we can give you in real time how does it compare currently with all the other papers in the field. And this is really papers with code. So it's the paper plus the code links plus evaluation results that let you compare this paper in real time to all the other papers in the field. And because we do this across the whole field, um, we can tell you what's the current state of the art on, on thousands of different ML tasks. So here is one well-known task, image classification and image net, and um, you can see what the state of the art is, but you can also see what kind of progress we made over time. So on x-axis is publication date, on y-axis is performance, and each of these dots is one method, and each of them you can click, you can get the paper, you can get the code, you can get uh, the results to compare with other data sets as well. And so we're really doing this large-scale indexing project of ML, and we have the largest number of leaderboards, about 1,400. Um, majority of which are contributed by the community. So some of it is automated, but we have a, a, a really big community that we are super grateful for that, that helps us curate uh, and, and maintain this resource. So that is papers with code now, uh, but that has its own limitations. So it's nice to have all this information, but then, you know, how many people here, you know, went, found some really cool paper, went to the code, but then found, you know, doesn't run, doesn't reproduce the results, right? Or they found, okay, it runs, but there's no pre-trained models. There's no way of, you know, verifying these results. Or there are pre-trained models, but there's absolutely no training scripts, right? There are no, they, no, no way of applying it to a new data set. So there's still this gap. There's still a gap from going from a paper to actually being able to use it for your own needs. And um, we try to bridge that gap as much as possible. And you know, today we are making kind of another step towards that. So we are launching SotaBench. And the mission of SotaBench is simple. And it's simply benchmark every open source model. For every open source model, we should know what the performance is, how it compares to other models, how it compares to papers. So why do we want to do this? Well, first, we want to map out what's reproduced. So on that ImageNet graph I showed you, we want to know for each of those dots, is there actually sufficient information to reproduce it? We want to find what are the most high-quality implementations out there that you can, you can be using. And finally, we want to kind of supercharge comparison. So not only compare one paper with another paper, we want to compare different model implementations, different frameworks, or to compare different hardware, does it run on mobile, uh, different repositories, different research fields, and so on. I want to be compare everything against everything and find the best method for my, for my task. Now, obviously, you know, Benchmarking is not something that's new. There, there's many different benchmarking platforms out there, but we've uh, taken a couple of uh, unique design decisions here. So first of all, we feel that benchmarking shouldn't be something that's isolated. It's not like a service you, you get the score from and then you forget about it. So the first thing we did, we integrated with GitHub. So it works a bit like continuous integration. You, you connect your repository, um, and then it kind of, instead of running unit tests, it kind of runs benchmarks on your models. 
The second thing is we need to leverage existing resources. Like we don't want to like create, um, you know, uh, replace Coda Lab or or any of the other, um, you know, amazing tools that are already there. We want to integrate with all of them, and that means you know integrating also with papers we code with all the results we have there, but also third-party services as well. And finally, maybe this goes without saying, it should be free and open, so anybody can add repos, anybody can add benchmarks, GPUs, and all of this is free. So how does, how does it work? How do you add your repo? Um, well, in your, in your GitHub repo, you would add one file, so the bench.py that has a bit of uh, integration codes where you say which paper you're comparing to, if you're comparing to a paper, um, uh, you kind of use your model, and then um, um, kind of submit those to, to benchmarks, uh, and, and we kind of uh, uh, evaluate that. And we have um, libraries that are framework independent, uh, and we also have benchmarks that are specifically made for PyTorch, which makes it much simpler because you can just say, oh, here's my PyTorch model, here's some transforms, just plug it in and it works. It's just literally a couple of lines of code. Um, once you connect your repository to our service, it works as CI, so you have kind of builds on every commit. Uh, and we built like a relatively complex caching infrastructure to make that actually possible. All right, so where does this actually get us? So um, we've run this uh, in, in beta for, for the last couple of weeks, and uh, we benchmarked about 150 ImageNet models. Um, and um, these are the results we got. So on the x axis, you have predictions per second, on y axis, you have, again, accuracy. Um, and you can now see all of these models um, out there, and you can see this clear trade-off between uh, having a really slow model that performs very well versus having a much faster model that then performs uh, slightly less well. And you can go uh, explore this graph, and for each of these dots, we show you exactly how to get exactly that result. And um, if you see at the bottom, we also have like little reproduce marks that tell you, yes, this, pay, this model from this repository gives you the same result as it was claimed in the paper. So we feel that this might be useful in various different contexts. Um, so if you're just kind of looking for ML codes, this, this could be a good starting point for you to understand the different algorithms, to, to understand uh, what's going on in the field. Um, if you're developing your own library, this is the only ML-specific CI system that gives you free GPUs and it kind of enables you to create really high-quality uh, software. Uh, that you know, other people can immediately uh, run and have absolute confidence to actually produce those results. Um, if you're somebody who is a researcher or um, just kind of a hobbyist who kind of just once in a while puts something out there, it's a nice way of just showing that you've done the right thing, right? That you released all the, co all the models, that you can reproduce the results, and so on. So it just gives you this kind of, uh, kind of um, it lets you show that, that you've, you've done it uh, correctly. If you're creating benchmarks, uh, this is an opportunity to integrate your benchmarks into GitHub repositories, which is where people you know, build and iterate on software, and therefore kind of increase the, uh, the impact uh, of, of what you're doing, hopefully. Um, and finally, if you're teaching ML, this is really fun to give you students to try to reproduce a bunch of papers and then fail in various ways. Uh, that's what we've been doing uh, together with some, uh, some Vita testers. It's been a lot of fun. So that is that. Um, this is now live, sotabench.com. Check it out. Uh, we are looking for people to try it out, to give us feedback, to submit new benchmarks, to submit new repos, to tell us whether they like it or hate it. Um, and yeah, I encourage you to, to have a look at it and that's it. Thank you very much.